Okay, so I just wanted to make a quick video to clear up a little bit of a con confusion about second order homogeneous linear recurrence relations. Um, so just to recap, um, so the types of relations we're talking about are things that look like this. A n is equal to a constant times C a n minus one plus some constant times a n minus two. Uh, remember the method for solving this, we first come up with the characteristic equation, which in this case is x squared minus cx minus d. Um, and then there was three different cases depending on the roots of the characteristic equation. So the roots could be real and distinct. You could have a repeated real root or complex roots. And the case I wanted to talk a little bit more about, um, so we did do some examples of this in class, but I think there's still a little bit of confusion about this, and that's the case where the roots are complex. So again, let me write down the characteristic equation. And first of all, how can we recognize whether the roots are complex? Um, and this is something I guess everybody is very familiar with, right? You can use the quadratic equation. So the roots are, in this case, it's c plus minus square root of c squared minus 4 times 1 times negative d over 2. So this is then c plus minus the square root of c squared plus 4d over 2. So you get complex roots when c squared plus 4d is less than 0. And the roots are always going to be complex conjugates of each other. <clears throat> So let's say the roots are a plus bi and a minus bi. Then what we learned in class is that the general solution is capital A times a plus bi to the n plus capital B a minus bi to the n for some constants a and b. Okay, and this is our general solution for a n. Okay, and as usual, when you have this kind of thing, you, this gives you the general solution, and then to find the specific solution um, for some initial conditions, what you have to do is plug them in. Now, one thing that I didn't tell you a lot about um, is the fact that actually, in some cases, your a and b might actually be complex numbers, okay, depending on what the initial conditions are, okay, because I think the, the examples we mainly looked at, a and b were real numbers, but actually they could actually be uh, complex numbers. So let's see an example where that happens. So as an example, suppose that you get that your roots are uh, 1 plus i and 1 minus i. So then your general solution looks like a times 1 plus i to the n um, plus 1 minus i, sorry, times plus b times 1 minus i to the n. And suppose I tell you that um, I have initial conditions a0 is 2 and a1 is negative 2. Okay, so when I plug this in, I get, when I plug in 0, I get a, and then I've got 1 plus i to the 0, which is 1, um, and then I've got plus b, 1 minus i to the 0, which is again 1, and that's supposed to equal 2. And then I've got a um, times, this time, a 1 plus i. So this is when I'm plugging in n equals 1 into here. So plus b times 1 minus i equals negative 2. So the equations we have are that, yeah, a plus b is 2, and then this equation here, a times 1 plus i plus b times 1 minus i is equal to negative 2. If I take this second equation, I can write it as a plus b plus a times i and then minus b times i. So that's the same as a minus b, oops, minus b times i. And that's supposed to equal negative 2. Now here's the thing. I know that a plus b is 2 by my first equation. So I can actually plug that into my second equation. So what I get is that, so I plug in my a plus b is 2. My second equation becomes 2 plus a minus b times i equals negative 2. Or in other words, a minus b times i is equal to negative 4. But this is a little... Um, interesting because that tells us that a minus b um, is equal to well this is a little bit interesting because this tells me so if i solve this for a it tells me that a is um, negative 4 plus b i all divided by i which is negative 4 over i plus b if i multiply this fraction on the top and the bottom by i 
and so this is negative 4, I'll do this in two steps, i over i squared plus b. I know that i squared is negative 1, so this gives me that um, a is the same as b uh, plus 4i. Okay, I'm just taking this i squared, I'm putting in negative 1, it cancels the negatives, and I get 4i. But that tells me actually that a and b are going to be complex numbers, actually. Um, so now the equations we have, so I'll start writing over here in this corner, where we have that a plus b is 2, and a is b plus 4i. So I put that into the first one, and we have 2b plus 4i is 2. Uh, solve it for b, so b is um, 1 minus 2i, and if you solve for a in the other equation, uh, you get that a is now 1 plus 2i. Okay. And this seems weird because these are complex numbers, and I know that you're maybe not the most familiar with complex numbers, um, but this actually gives you the, the solution. So, so remember our general solution was um, a 1 plus i plus b 1 minus i, oops, 1 minus i, and both of these, remember, are to the power n. <clears throat> and what we found, we, we solved for a and b, and what we found is that a n, so our solution is 1 plus 2i, 1 plus i to the n, plus 1 minus 2i, 1 minus i to the n. And that is the final answer, which seems extremely weird because uh, we've got all these complex numbers floating around, but somehow I know that a n is an integer. Um, and it turns out, yeah, yeah, these things do always kind of cancel out and give you an integer. Um, it might not be easy to see that right from here, but uh, it always will be true. And always with these things, if you are worried about it, you can always check the answer, um, but you don't really need to. Um, as long as you've solved the equations correctly, you will get the right answer. It just, don't be afraid if it has complex numbers in it. Um, one thing I should say is that if your a n is real, if your sequence a n is a bunch of real numbers, then a and b, so we know that, first of all, so these numbers here, the roots have to be complex conjugates, and what I'm saying is that a and b also must be <clears throat> complex conjugates. So if you ever end up um, with a solution where these this a and b are not complex conjugates, then you know that there's something wrong there, um, and you might need to uh, go back and look at your solution. Okay, so hopefully this helps clarify some confusion about uh, this case of complex roots, um, and uh, yeah, so thank you for watching.